Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 252. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Toy Biz Toys, Marvel Comics, X-Men, X-Force, Avalanche action figure. A mutant with the ability to control earth and rock, Avalanche's powers earn him a place in the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Now operating largely on his own, or in the company of his close friends and allies, the Blob and Pyro, Avalanche strikes not so much out of hatred for normal humans, but from a desire to make a profit. This vintage figure from the hit 1990s X-Men animated series stands a full 5 inches in height and is part of the Marvel Comics toy line. Feature has limited articulation and is highly detailed down to the A initial on his chest, representing his mutant codename Avalanche. He comes hand-painted and includes an exploding rock platform. Just push the button on the platform's backside to launch an exploding rock. This figure also comes with a 1994 Fleer Ultra Marvel Universe trading card of the supervillain Nimrod in mint condition. Released in 1995 by Toy Biz Toys. Now the comic of the day is Uncanny X-Men, issue number 225, with the cover date of January 1988. With story by Chris Claremont, art by Mark Silvestri, and cover by Mark Silvestri. This is part of the Fall of the Mutants event, and this issue is titled False Dawn. We open in Edinburgh, Scotland, where Colossus has mostly recovered from his injuries battling the Marauders, and has taken the time to come to the village where the X-Men most recently fought the Juggernaut, to relax and spend some time sketching. Peter draws a picture of his Colossus form, which impresses the children until one named Lewis makes fun of them, saying the X-Men are just muties and that X-Factor are the real heroes. When a fight almost breaks out, Peter breaks it up and tells the children they should live peacefully. However, half their number are not sold after the damage done by the X-Men's battle previously that year. Meanwhile, in a place beyond the reaches of existence, the adversary appears in the court of the Omniversal Guardian Roma, who is trapped now that the adversary is free to do as he pleases. He gloats over how he has removed both Storm and Forge from the board and thus ensured his victory and that the universe will soon be destroyed by total chaos. Back in Scotland, among the ruins of the X-Men's battle with the Juggernaut, Colossus finds a wanted poster of the X-Men put up by a group called the Human Rights League. When considering the sacrifices he himself made, he recalls the injuries he sustained protecting the Morlocks. Realizing he's still in his organic metal form, he tries to change back to flesh and blood, and despite his efforts, he finds that he's trapped in his alternate form. Deciding that he must fight to make the world a better place, he goes to a payphone and accidentally wrecks its booth while trying to squeeze in. He places a call to Xavier's school in the United States and asks to speak to his sister. Happy to hear from her brother, Ileana transports to his location. She tells him that she's glad to see him and that he's recovered, but can't stay long as new mutants are going on a mission, and asks how she can help. Peter tells his sister that he'd like to be reunited with his fellow X-Men, a request his sister is more than happy to comply with and teleports the two of them away. The X-Men are in Dallas, Texas, to determine why Destiny's visions of their future are of their deaths in this city. They first decide to check out Eagle Plaza, the former home of Forge, but unfortunately they set off a booby trap, causing the whole place to cave in. Rogue manages to pull her two teammates out of the room before debris can fall on them. Flying them back outside, Rogue flies directly into Stonewall and bounces back, and the X-Men soon find themselves up against Freedom Force. The Blob is quickly launched in the air by Avalanche, who was mentioned earlier, and he lands on the incapacitated Wolverine to take him out of the fight. Mystique orders the X-Men to stand down and to be taken into custody. However, 
Rogue refuses, even though Mystique warns her that staying in Dallas will mean her and the X-Men's death. When Havoc calls Mystique on her support of the Mutant Registration Act, she defends it, but Alex isn't sold so easily by the woman who once led the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. All this leads to a full-out battle between the X-Men and Freedom Force. In the ensuing chaos, Mystique asks Destiny for guidance. However, the elderly precog tosses off her mask, telling her longtime friend that she sees nothing but death for all those who remain there. Meanwhile, Psylocke is attempting to use her mental powers to force the blob to move. This doesn't work. And when Super Saber attempts to take her down, she redirects him into Stonewall, causing him to bounce off his comrade and take out Avalanche. However, she's left open for attack by the Crimson Commando and is taken out with a single blow. The Blob gloats. However, this is short-lived, where the Fat Mutant is not so easily moved until Wolverine extracts his claws, poking him in the ass hard enough to make him leap into the air. As he begins to land, Colossus materializes and lands a powerful blow, sending the blob smashing into Eagle Plaza. Mystique attempts to trick the X-Men into ceasing their battle by assuming the form of Storm, but Rogue sees through it and attempts to tackle her when they are both blasted by Spiral. The X-Men regroup and Wolverine orders them into Eagle Plaza for cover. Destiny warns the Freedom Force to not let the X-Men do this because it will spell doom for them all. However, they're too late, and as the X-Men cross into the building, a giant rift in the fabric of existence opens in the sky, flooding downtown Dallas with light. As the Freedom Force wonder what this powerful light could be, Destiny tells them that this could be the beginning of the end for the entire world. This story is continued in the next issue. Geek Fact The Adversary was an ancient mystical entity, possibly demonic in nature, who sought to destroy the universe and create a new one in its stead. Bonus Geek Fact Avalanche has been affiliated with many teams, including the X-Corps, Freedom Force, Project Wide Awake, and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And Final Geek Fact Avalanche made his first appearance in Uncanny X-Men, issue number 141, with a cover date of January 1981. And for those of you unfamiliar with comics, this is a very iconic issue. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for today's Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out.